Amen, amen, amen. Good morning. Good morning. It is now time for our call to worship. Let us settle our minds and our hearts. Let them be fixed on God, His Son Jesus, and His saving grace through the power of His sacrifice. Amen. Amen. I call to worship if you can and will please stand for the reading of the word of God. Call to worship will be found in 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, beginning at verse 1. Amen. We all ready? Amen. Amen. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God. And house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked.
responsive reading is found in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 17. 1 Samuel chapter 17. We will begin at verse 40. First Samuel chapter 17, beginning at verse 40. We all ready? Amen. Amen. And he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a scrip. And his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. Thank you. 
Gerald Harden would like to thank the church for all the prayers that was offered for his nephew, Nortenia Shepherd. He is now out of the hospital and is learning how to walk again. We also want to know that Reverend Sam Freeman had surgery last week. He's actually had uh, multiple surgeries uh, and we continue to offer uh, him up in prayer. Amen. On Friday, we have memorial services for Brother Raymond Shepherd. We want to remember that entire family. Now, two happier notes. Thank you so much. The phrase is simple and the words are few, but behind them is a lot of appreciation. To my Bethany family, I have been so blessed to grow up with such a loving church family. I am beyond appreciative of all your constant encouragement and support through every stage of my life. I truly cherish each and every one of you and will keep in touch as I embark on my journey in Boston. I appreciate and love you all. Thank you. Love, Jariah Cole. Amen. Last, we would like to acknowledge another happy occasion on Friday at 2 p.m. There will be a wedding here at the church. Quintus Hill and Vasholi, uh, Vasholi Brooks will be married here. Uh, so we start praying for their marriage. Uh, last, Sister Janice Davis has a special announcement. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. To Pastor Haynes, our ministerial staff, and my church family. I could not let today go by without saying thank you to all of you for showing us so much love and support uh, during the time that our home has burned down. We are grateful for every call, every prayer, every thought that has been for us. And I wanted you to know that although we are going through a lot, God is still good. Amen. He has blessed us to be able to move into a three-bedroom home Amen. this Wednesday. Amen. So I just wanted you to know how much we love you and how much we appreciate your kindness during this time for us. Thank you.
As Jesus said unto him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No man, no one comes to the Father except through me. As I said, we welcome you. Feel at home. Come back again. Thank you. Church, say amen. amen. Say amen again. Amen. 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 We're so thankful to God for the privilege of coming together and worship. We're happy to see all of you here. And uh, we just praise God for allowing us to come together one more time. Yeah. I want to give us some praise. Thank God for this choir and how they blessed us today. Give God some praise for our choir. Glad to see John in the choir. Um, as always, ask that you govern yourselves according to the announcements as well as visit and pray for those persons who are sick and shut in. Continue to so this is your prayers for those persons who are sick. Uh, had a chance to talk with Reverend Freeman. Uh, he had that first surgery to remove cancer from his hand. He said they got it all. And uh, they're supposed to have a cosmetic surgery because he had a hole in his hand. I said, I'd rather have a hole in your hand with no cancer than have a hole in your hand with cancer. So uh, they were supposed to perform the, uh, the cosmetic surgery the following day. He, Talked with his wife, she said there was complications. Uh, the wound was uh, bleeding, so they had to go in and start the first surgery again. So I don't know what the present status is, but we're gonna keep praying because God is still hey, all right. And uh, we do thank God for what He's already done. Amen. We are praying for those bereaved families. You heard I mentioned uh, for the Raymond Shepherd's family, and we want to pray for. Uh, all of those other families who recently experienced the bereavement, and we want to continue to lift them up because God is a God of all comfort. Amen. And we're so glad that He is. Isn't it good to have somebody you can lean on? Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, this coming Friday, we're going to have. I don't want me to announce it. Don't say that. Want me to keep quiet? Nope. Well, I already blessed the picture. I mean, like, we're going to have a wedding this coming Friday. That's uh, half the couple is in church this morning. They are sitting on the last possible seat in the auditorium in the balcony. As far back as you can get. Way up there. Way up there. And uh, we so happy to have them here today. And we look forward to their glorious day this coming Friday. Pray for them and pray that God will bless their union. Amen. You know, in order to have a successful marriage, you got to have God in it. So we pray that God will bless them and keep them. Amen. Amen. Some birthdays, y'all. Sister Dewana McDonald. How much you have to pay to do the big all that? I understand all these beautiful ladies are here today because they know McDonald. Everybody, if you're here because the one invited you, they stand up. Let me see who you are. Thank y'all. Thank y'all for coming so much. We appreciate you being here. And want you to know you're always invited to Bethany, whether the one invites you or not. You're still invited. Bethany, we're glad to see y'all here. 
Her birthday's gonna be tomorrow. Brother Clint McKinney! Too. We don't have one of those machines that measure <laughs> fly up stuff. I, I don't know which one you want, but hey, y'all all good. Yeah. But Clint, one of our faithful members, deeply friend, brother, we thank God for him. Y'all give God some praise for Brother McKinney!
Father, let's pray for him. Ever is ever here today? Behind you. Behind you. Mama's brother. Oh, yeah, they did tell you how to do it. Oh, yeah, I'm praying for you, man. How old was it? 81. He had a good long life. Boy, you better straighten up. You're going to live 81 years. You got to. Oh, man, you're a good man. You're a good man. What about Bobby Johnson? That's the dad. Oh, that's, that's the dad. All right. Let's continue to pray for him. He's one of our leading choir members. Uh, uh, I wanted to recognize my minister of music, Reverend Dr. Glenn Nixon. <laughs> Thomas Matfield. <laughs> Alan Green! Pray for Bethany, pray for your pastor. Amen.
would turn when they got ready to pray. They would turn toward Jerusalem because that's where the temple was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They felt, uh, figured that the temple is the place that's God's house. If I'm going to talk to God, I need to point in that direction. But, but they didn't really think God was everywhere. I, I thought about it. I said, you know, maybe that, that, gives, that gives an explanation uh, to their, their sporadic behavior. Because, you know, when they left uh, Jerusalem, when they left Israel, uh, man, they, they, they started taking up with other people, other nations, other gods. Started worshiping idol gods. And, and maybe, maybe they bought into that notion that uh, since I'm not in Israel, Israel God is not in power, so we're going to just give uh, homage to the God that's here. I don't know, I don't know. But that logic was, it wasn't, it wasn't really a good explanation, but the fact is, is that there's this variation of people's relationship with God. A lot of folk who claim to be Christians, a lot of folk who claim to know God, be ready to admit. I, I get everybody raise their hand this morning. Do you believe God is a great God? Oh, yeah. But, but the problem is, even if you say God is a great God, you don't all mean the same thing. You see, you see, how great God is really depends on what's your relationship with God. Is God great enough to stop that phone from ringing? Right now? Yeah. That, 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 that. I think that David felt like God was great. But I felt like his brothers thought God was great too. That, that, that the question is not whether you think God is great. The question is what your measure of greatness is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How great is he? Is, is, is God great enough to raise the dead? Is, is God great enough to change the weather? Is God great enough to alter your life? That, that you can say he's great, but the, the, the real question is, how great is your God? <laughs> See what it boils down to? It's not, it's not how great my God is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's how great is your God. Amen. Amen. Because my relationship really has nothing to do with your relationship. <laughs> That, 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 that if you don't know him for yourself, yeah. 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 It, it, really, it really doesn't matter. I, yeah. I, was, I was haunted by the whole concept because I put in the news that this, this young fellow, he, uh, he wanted to sue Fort Worth because Fort Worth wouldn't let him put up his banners. His group, his group was an atheist group, and their banner read, We trust in no God. That would get a lot. There, in no God do we trust. That's what it's not. In no God do we trust. In no God. And, and I'm saying, wow. I mean, he, he wants to brag about the fact that he's an atheist. He doesn't know God. Uh, uh, he, he wants to brag about the fact. He said, we shouldn't allow God's name in our public school. And I'm saying, wow. How much of that is going on? How many, how many of our young people don't believe in God? Come on, right? How many folks don't believe that God even exists, let alone how strong he is? And what's worse still, even those who believe God exists, how strong is he? I mean, if he's just a subject for conversation, if he's just somebody you talk about or something, if he's just somebody you read about in the Bible when you pick it up, yeah. he's still not strong enough. How awesome is your God? How great is your God? That's, that's what got me here. That's my sermon. I'm through. But let me talk about David and go live for a minute. Uh, uh, God's greatness is shown and magnified when our faith is among strong and known. You see, if somebody says there is no God and there is no challenge of their saying so, you really 
find yourself where we are today. See, the problem today is not uh, that there aren't Christians. The problem is we've got too many quiet Christians. We've got a lot of folk who claim to believe in God, but they don't talk about it. A lot of folks don't believe in God, but they really don't defend it. I mean, as long as my 401k is all right, as long as my job is okay, as long as I got a nice house, nice car, I'm living large, I don't give a fat rat what you say about God. But I'm doing a pretty good job taking care of myself. Yeah, 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 yeah. So let me start with the, the, the acknowledge, acknowledging an assignment. Acknowledging an assignment. I contend that David does not know his assignment until he walks into the camp and he hears Goliath talking. That's the child. I contend with his daddy calls him and tells him to bring the boys their lunch, or some food, or some goodies. He is not thinking about some supporting and fighting for God. That's not even on his mind. He wants to go where his older brothers are. He wants to know what's happening, what's going on. It's not until he gets in the camp and he is Goliath challenge the God of Israel. The God of Israel. It's, it's Goliath's word that claims David's attention. It's Goliath's words that calls David to want to defend his God. Yeah, I'm gonna start there because, because I contend a lot of folk would have gone to the same place and heard the same words and it wouldn't have bothered them at all. You don't take my opinion for it. It happened right here in the text. Yeah, 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 yeah. His brother's right there. Yeah. Oh. They don't say nothing. King, King Saul, he was sitting right there. He ain't saying a whole lot. You know, that, 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 that we allow the world to say anything and everything about our God, and we don't feel the urge to defend him. <laughs> Folk can brag on a lot of stuff, and we just gobble it up. But we don't want to say anything about how good God is. You will brag about your PhD, but you don't brag about, oh, I wish I had a witness here. You don't brag about your relationship with God. That God made a difference in my life. God loved me so much, he sent his only begotten son that because I have faith in him, I can have everlasting. life. Seems like to me somewhere along the line, you ought to feel a strong urge to let somebody know how good God has been to you. He heard, he heard, he heard. He, he, he said, what, 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 what gives this uncircumcised <laughs> to talk like this <laughs> to Israel and Israel's God? You can talk like that at your house. You can talk like that on, 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 at the party around the corner. But you don't come to my house talking like this about my God. You can talk about that at the Hokey Talk last night, but you ain't coming up in here and saying that kind of mess about my God. You, 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 you can talk that when I'm not around, when I'm not in here, in ear distance, but you can't talk like that if I hear what you say. Whenever you're talking about my God, I have the response, not the urge, the responsibility. The responsibility. I have the responsibility to let you know Stirred up David, stirred up David. Now, now, now. David uh, disliked uh, the giant's disrespect for Israel and Israel's God. But, 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 uh, it went, it went beyond that. You see, you see, uh, David 
felt like he had to do something. Mm. He felt like he had to change something. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why is it his brother didn't get the urge to fight the huh. Why? Why is it King Saul didn't want to fight him? Think about that. Saul, Goliath's big man, Saul was tall. They said he was taller than anybody else. You remember when God called Saul? He said he, he's tall, he's head and shoulder above everybody else. You remember when God called Saul and he said, I'm going to make you the first king of Israel? You remember when God sent Saul to battle and Saul was so fired up and he was ready to fight anybody and everybody in the name of the Lord? What happened between that Saul and the Sorry, something we see in chapter 17. You gotta understand that because you have a relationship with God, I wish I had a witness here, don't mean you have a relationship with God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because you once knew him, don't mean you still know him. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Now, you see, see, I can know about him, I can know his name, but. But, but it's bad when your relationship loses its intensity. It's bad when the fervor is gone. It's like the it's like wife told her husband, the thrill is gone. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Can you imagine your baby looking at you and say, the thrill is gone? Is it still going to be all right? Is it still going to be all right? <laughs> you still going to have some intensity and she just told you the thrill was gone? <laughs> he just told her the fire is all out. I see the flame, but I don't feel the heat. <laughs> I need to know God and I 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't, can't put it off. Can't delay it. It's too important. You see, tomorrow is not even promised to you. Who told you you're going to live to get older? Who told you you're going to live to be grown? You might be living your last day. You may be experiencing your last hour. You might be on your last day. You better seek the Lord while he's still. to know. Hey, maybe you better you better call, you better you better stay close enough to him. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. you don't know when he's calling you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I gotta be able to know that 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 moment. You see, you see, you see sometimes God is setting you up and you don't realize this is the moment. He, he's going, but he don't know why he's going. He's going, but he don't know God is he thought his daddy was sending him in the camp. He doesn't realize it's God sending him in the town. But then God put him in at just the right time. While he's walking in there, the giant starts to talk. And don't fool yourself when I'm talking about gangster the giants. I'm not just talking about Goliath. Because the enemy will use a whole lot of giants in your life trying to get you. I wish I would. We'll get you off a of killer. The, the, the devil will use a lot of giants. He'll use the giant of contemplation. He'll use the lot of giant of Staleness, the giant of boring. He used the giant uh, of a whole lot of negative. He will do whatever he has to do in order to get you off of God's purpose for your life. But don't allow the giants to call you. Forget who called you. When the giants start talking negatively about God, yeah, 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 you don't listen to God. Without having some power in your life. You don't listen to God without having some overruling in your life. When you listen to God, He gives you, I wish I had a witness here. The ungodly are not so, but like the chair, which the wind driveth the way. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment of our sins. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous. Blessed is the man that walketh not. In the counsel of the ungodly, and I'll stay with the rest of my city. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. If I delight in the law, I know the law. If I delight in the law, I live by the law. If I delight in the law, I meditate in the law day and night. Come on here, somebody. I need to acknowledge my assignment. Then. Don't feel bad if you don't know your assignment, but maybe you can't claim to walk with God and at some point don't get your assignment. The problem is not that God hasn't given you your assignment. The problem is you haven't acknowledged your assignment. And if you haven't acknowledged it, it's because you are not tuned in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's no big deal not to get it the first time. Some of y'all hard headed like Gideon, you know, he Gideon kind of slow, you know, he he got all kind of tests for God. Yeah, yeah, you want God to wet stones and all that, wet fleeces and wet grass and all that mess. At some point, you need to ask God, God created me a clean heart and renewing me the right. Lord, open up my ears so I can hear what you're trying to say to me. Lord, make it clear, make it plain. know what you're trying to do. Yeah. <laughs> not do. Not only do I see this acknowledging the assignment, I also need to analyze advice. Yeah. Yeah. Analyze advice. I just told you, you can, you can receive ungodly advice, yeah. but you've got to be able to discern what's godly and what's ungodly. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what I find out about the devil? The enemy knows how to give you bad advice yeah. from good people. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yes. Okay. Sometimes he'll use your mentor to give you bad advice. Yeah. Sometimes he'll use your older brother to give you bad advice. 
Sometimes you use your mouth. Oh, yeah. Daddy. How can discern when daddy giving me bad advice? How can I tell the difference? David, David is sitting there listening, and normally you think an older brother gives him some good advice. But, but you got to be careful taking advice from folk whose fear is overriding their faith. See, when I get so scared, I stop trusting God. Yeah, I, I wish I had a witness. Yeah. Well, they were all right. They were all right. They were probably they were okay until they saw go live. Homeboy, nine feet tall. I wish I had a witness here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big old strong joke. We ain't got to fight. These, these armies don't have to fight. Just send me somebody to fight me. Yeah, yeah. I'll face anybody. Ooh, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah. And the Bible said they were greatly afraid, terribly afraid. They were scared. They were scared. Let me tell you something. The devil knows how to get you scared. <laughs> the devil knows how to get your your bravery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He knows how to make you out a little wimp. I was watching, I was watching, I was watching football game last night. I, truth be told, football game was watching me last night. <laughs> right before I fell off, I saw this big old joker going around the corner. A little bit of small joker. Come out of nowhere and wiped him out. Straight for his knees. <laughs> and when he hit his knees, home part, he flips. Look at that. Head first and hit the ground. How did that bitty joker did that? I guarantee you, he wasn't worried about how big the joker was. Right, right. If I could get him here this morning to testify, he'd tell you. It's not how big the giant is, it's where you hit it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's where you hit it. If you hit it in the right spot, he will fall. Oh, I wish I had to this here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. King. Like Saul gave bad advice. Older brother gave bad advice. Scared people gave him bad advice. The best advice doesn't always come from familiar sources. The best advice always come from God. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to say that again. The best advice comes from God. Voices. God says you have to fight him. What's the song say? David, you can't, you can't, you, you're too young. You're too young. You don't have experience. He, he's a professional warrior. You're just a little shepherd boy. You're too young, you're too young. Leave him alone. You're out of your league. That's, that's out of your league. You can't handle it that. You can't handle it like that. Let me, let me just say this for I take my seat is that no matter what league you're in, you're never out of your league as long as God is on your side. Because if God is for me, He's more than the world. See, 
y'all be saying cliches, but y'all don't believe that stuff. If God is for me, he's more than the world. Come on here, somebody. God is on my side. He's more than the world. Being on the other side. If God is fighting with me, I'm victorious not because of me. I'm victorious because the battle is not mine. <laughs> it's the Lord. David, David gives you an example of what to do when you're being bombarded with bad advice. How, you, how do you keep your spirits up? How do you stay focused? Hmm. You know, there are a lot of things God can do for you. Huh. But one thing God can't do for you, he can't testify for you. Amen. Oh, I said something then. I don't care. I don't care if they shout it or not. I said something then. It's that God will do a lot of things for you, but one thing God won't do for you, he won't testify for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. If God, if God has done something for you, He doesn't. You, you know, since you're waiting around for God to tell it, He wants you to tell it. You can't expect Mama to talk for you. You got to talk for yourself. You can't expect your brothers to testify for you. You got to testify for yourself. And let me just say it right now: If God is this great God you claim He is, there are some experiences in your life where He should have shown, He should have proven His greatness in your life. Hey, hey, hey! And David, David, give a secret that if you want to be able to stand against your giants, you need to be able to remember some past victories. Come on here, somebody. <laughs> and you've got to be willing to testify yourself about your best. Sometimes you don't have to testify to others. Sometimes you got to encourage yourself in the Lord. Sometimes you got to talk to you. you
this here. Yeah. Yeah. good. I didn't mean to take this long, but since this has sung so long, I figured I'd preach a little longer. <laughs> Uh -huh. yes, Let me close this thing talking about the authorized attack. You better make sure when you attack your giants, uh -huh. your fight is authorized by the Lord. Uh -huh. David's fight was authorized by God. Uh -huh. But you tell when God is in charge. Because you can't fight just any kind of way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When God is in charge, you got to recognize. Uh -huh. Come on, you got to fight God's way. Yeah. Oh, yes. God don't want you using nobody else's armor. Uh -huh. Saul yeah. tried to get him to fight with his weapons. Yeah. Yeah. Saul tried to give him his armor, but you see. When you're on the Lord's side, you got to use God's weapon. Be willing, be willing to use what you're familiar with. Yeah. Don't let somebody give you their gun and you can't even shoot. Because you used to have a big gun and you can't fire that sucker. You can have a big gun and still miss your target. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you got a double barrel shotgun, it can beat the living dance. <laughs> it can literally knock you unconscious. No, you got to make sure you're using God's weapons. And you're doing it God's way. Yeah, yeah. And if you're doing it God's way, you will be victorious. David, who are you depending on? David said, I'm going to lean on the same God I leaned on with that lion and that bear. Yeah. And the Bible declared uh, Claudia, he was on his way to Goliath. Uh -huh. uh, and while he was coming, Goliath started laughing. Yes, Lord. Started hoorahing. He was making fun of him. Uh, Y'all send this little young Boy, bringing his stick with him. Am I a dog? Yeah. That you come at me with sticks. I'm going to feed you to my gods. Oh, wow. He made it personal now. You see, he's not just talking about David. He's thinking his gods are superior to David's God. Yeah. David's God is not even the in the equation for Goliath, for if he considered David's God, he wouldn't be talking so bravely. And I came out to tell you, because others don't consider your God, it doesn't give you the right to leave them out of the equation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember, not only is God in the equation, it's really all about the Lord. If it wasn't for the Lord on my side, where would I be? The Lord woke me up this morning. He started me on my way. If it wasn't for the Lord on my side, I would have thrown in my tower a long time ago. So you see the greatness of God in this young teenager. You see, the teenager is not the focus. It's the God behind the teenager. The teenager is not the focus. It's the faith the teenager has in this awesome God that claims all of our attention. Yes, he doesn't look like a whole lot, but he's got a whole lot with him. He doesn't look like he's very strong, but he's got a lot of power with him. The Bible said uh, he picked up five smooth songs. Uh, somebody said, well, he picked up five in case he missed. No, David wasn't thinking about missing. But he heard Goliath had four brothers. So there is, I wish I had a witness here. So, so uh, I got to take care of more than Goliath. Uh, I'm ready for whatever the devil throws my way. Uh, I wish I had a witness here. And the Bible said, uh, why Goliath was running his mouth, uh, feeling
feeling all smug and great, uh, David took one smooth stone, uh, put it in his sling shot. Uh, old preacher said, he said, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy, I don't believe he said all that. Uh, he doesn't even know anything about the Son yet. Uh, and he hadn't met the Holy Ghost. Uh, but I do believe he swung that sling, uh, and he didn't let it go. Uh, and when the rock uh, started to fly, uh, the Bible said it hit Goliath uh, in the middle of his forehead. Uh, now I used to think it knocked him out and then he cut his head off. Uh, but the Bible said when he fell, uh, he slew him. I wish. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, he hit him so hard that a rock killed him. Uh, you need to understand a rock in the hands of the Lord uh, can make a difference with the giant in your life. A rock in the hands of the Lord uh, can hit your enemies where they need to be hit. Uh, a rock in the hands of the Lord will give you the victory uh, and then uh, you'll be able to keep on going. Uh, said David didn't have a sword uh, and so what he did, he climbed on Goliath. Uh, he took Goliath's sword uh, and cut his head off uh, with his own sword. Oh, that's preaching stuff right there. Uh, you see, uh, you don't need to have a sword to win the battle, uh, but you can have a sword to cut off yeah, the spoils. Uh, yes, uh, he took a sword and cut his head off. Uh, and he said he bought the head uh, over there uh, and allowed Saul to see the head in his hand. Uh, yes, uh, when they saw Goliath fall, uh, didn't a whole lot happen. Uh, but when David raised up his head, said the whole Philistine army started to run for their life and they chased them and killed them and got the spoil. God gave them the victory. Yeah, victory has its own rewards. All I'm trying to say is you ought to know who God is. You ought to know how great God is. And you ought to know that God's greatness to be told uh, throughout the land and country. Uh, you think the victory uh, is that David killed Goliath. Uh, that ain't the victory. Uh, the Bible said uh, he just a teenager. Uh, that was before uh, Uriah uh, kept the victory. Uh, that was before uh, he saw that fox taking a bath. Uh, yes, he was in the victory. Uh, and all that junk hadn't happened yet. Uh, but the Bible declared the man after God's own heart. He's after God's own heart because he feels like God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ask or think. He's a man after God's own heart because he leans on the Lord and he depends on him everywhere he goes. He's a man Great. 
Shall bow in humble air. 
Pastor Haynes, to the Bethany family, and to all of our guests. Dewana McDonald is asking that all of you who came to worship with her today, if you'll wait out in the front by the water cooler to take a picture after church, she'd appreciate it. Felicia Green is requesting prayer for Lyric Turner and her parents as they travel to Brown University to enter her into her first year. Amen. Felicia Green is requesting prayer for herself and the kids that were left behind that they have a successful week. And McKaylee Adams is requesting prayer for Everett Simpson due to the loss of his father. Amen. Church say amen. amen. 